Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another week of online service. This morning, we gather as the family of Christ, and as one voice, we praise the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the darkness, we are waiting with our hope, with our light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin king the world from a throne of endless glory to a creator in the earth. also the king of our lives and the king of our family. As we continue to worship, may we let Jesus be the center of it all. 
in our actions, our thoughts, and in our daily living, especially through this circuit breaker. Center of it all, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus at the center. Of it all, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, and nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do Jesus, you're the center Everything we lost around you Jesus, you
me. Yes, do you not love me? The Bible tells me so. I sing verse two together. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. He who died. Heaven's gate to open wide He will wash away my sin Let His little child come in Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Brothers and sisters, let us pray together. Our glorious God, it is the passion of our life to worship you, the longing of our soul to adore you. It is our pleasure to approach you. So give us power by your Spirit to help us worship now, that we may forget the worldly distractions and troubles and be brought into your holy presence. Be refreshed, comforted, and blessed. O Lord, give us knowledge of your goodness that we might be content and joyful with what we have now. Give us Jesus, our Saviour, the Son of God, that we might not be terrified by the pandemic, but be drawn near with love and hope to once again experience your glory manifested in the gospel. And give us a new sense of your forgiveness today that we will be grateful always. Let us live wholly to you. Let us trust you forevermore. And therefore we cry out to you that you will bless us and enlarge our boundaries. Let your hand be with us and keep us from harm so that we will be free from pain. In your time, may you grant us your request. This is our prayer to the utmost high God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 verses 18 to 21 Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Good morning. The Bible says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And today is Mother's Day. And we would like to extend the warm greetings to all the mothers, whether at different locations or even in different countries. May all the mothers continue to receive God's double blessing and to have good health and continue to be blessing to the family, to their loved ones. And of course, Mother's Day, uh, usually we say the focus on mothers. Yes, we thank God for all the mothers. And, uh, but today, the focus will be on, again, family. Uh, when we talk about mothers, we talk about also fathers. We talk about family. So this morning, we turn our 
focus back to the Word of God. The scripture we just read, Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 to 21. And it talks about the so-called family life or domestic. It is quite interesting to look at what it means by family from the post perspective. If you look at the text, either in Colossians, Philippians, or Ephesians, you would notice regarding family, domestic, Paul actually covered three types of relationship. One type is husband and wife. The second type, parent and child. And the third type, master and servant. These are considered as domestic relationship within the framework of family. So family is more than just husband and wife. It's more than just parent and child. It also includes the so-called master and servant. Because in those days, whether back in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, the family comprises of mothers, fathers, parents, children, and also the servants. But today our focus will be more on the two types of relationship of the family. Husband and wife and parent and child. So I would like to focus on this passage with the title Home Sweet Home. Well, how was your week? Again, we are confided in the, at home. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay healthy. The focus again is home, is about family. And we like to learn from this passage. When Paul tried to help us how to obtain home sweet home, how to make it as a reality. Oftentimes we encounter difficulties, challenges, and uh, to many people, probably a lot of havoc when they come to family, because relationship-wise, especially about the marriage, the husband and wife, or even the parent and child. Of course, this passage is not only taken about husband and wife. It also talks about maybe it's within the siblings, between brothers and sisters. And maybe our loved one not around us, but the family also still portray all the members, it may not stay at the same place. Maybe you are the only one here in Singapore and your parents may be back home in the home country. But still, the family, the, the, the understanding of family and implications still there. So as we look at this passage, let's learn lesson. How you and I can attain and to make home sweet home as a reality. And first of all, and Paul talks about to make home sweep home as a reality. The first one is to make Christ the cornerstone of our family. Make Christ the cornerstone of our family. If you look at verse 18 and verse 20, it's clear Paul using the phrase in the Lord and pleasing the Lord. So basically the focus is always the Lord. When we talk about family, different types of relationship, in order for you and I to attain or to make that home sweet home become reality, Paul says that we have to first make Christ as the cornerstone of our family. By putting this in practical terms, in order for you and I to make Christ as the cornerstone of our family, then we have to at least practice these few important key of important uh, exercise. Family should be the place we glorify God. Family should be the place we learn and know about God. And family should be the place that we experience the love of God. And family should be the place that we share the grace of God. And family is supposed to be the place that we're able to witness the goodness 
of God. And family is supposing to be the place we are able to put practice the word of God in action. So that means that if we truly believe that Christ is the cornerstone of the family, then the relationship, either husband and wife, is a parent and child, or even master and slave, all this different type of relationship, we have to make Christ as the cornerstone, as a center, and continue to experience God in the very personal way. So lesson one is to make Christ the cornerstone of the family. And this is what we have been talking about in the past few weeks. And to practice night to night sandwich. And then to practice over the meal time. And then to share what the Bible means to you. What's your personal experience, your encounter in life. And to share with each other. So lesson one, to make Christ the cornerstone of our family. Lesson two. To make home sweet home a reality, the second lesson depends on mutual love as the motivation of our marriage. Depends on mutual love as the motivation of our marriage. If you look at, again, verse 18 and 19, it talks about wives submit to your husband. Husband. Love your wives. I think it's quite interesting to look at how Paul portray this. He just simply put forward in the very blunted way. There's no other formula. For wife, submit to your husband. For husband, love your wife. Because in reality, in reality, when you talk about husband and wife relationship, the most difficult thing for a wife relate to the husband is submission. And for every husband, the most challenging thing for the husband to wife is to love. Regardless how we explain it, even we know in, in, in the grammatical analysis of the term, submit and love, they are all present active imperative. That means it's ongoing, it's not passive, is always active and is imperative. There's no other option. You are wife, submit. You are husband, you love. Submit as the church to Christ. Love as Christ to church. There's, there's no, no option. There is, you, you cannot negotiate. Basically, this is what is expected, good and good. But the bottom line of either submit or love, it talk about one central key key idea is to let go of yourself. Deny yourself. In order for wife to submit, for husband to love, it's always the issue of ego. It's how much you're willing to let go. You see, it's quite interesting because it's using present active imperative. So what Paul tried to say is not to ask whether my wife will submit to me or not, whether my husband will love me or not. No, he's not talking about that. Paul doesn't say, husband, let your wife submit to you. Wife, let your husband love you. No, no, no. He it says it's a present active imperative. So it is you and I, when we husband and when we wives, how to have that mutual love. Eventually is love that will motivate us willing to let go of our right, of our privilege, regardless what really happened in marriage. In order for you and I to make home sweet home as a reality, it is always mutual love. And the love that comes from God. And then keep on practicing in marriage. And learn to know more, to understand, to accept, and then willing to give, willing to endure, willing to sacrifice. There is no fairness in marriage. We cannot say it's unfair. Should I submit him first or should I love her first? There's no fair. It's not a question of fair or unfair. 
Love is an action. Love is a choice. And within mutual love, pose challenge husband and wife to build that kind of a relationship like Christ and the church. And it's so that the family will be blessed and marriage will be blessed. And then it will build up a home sweet home. And this is, uh, is really challenging for every husband and wife. And if you are single at this point, I think it's also the good time to, for you to reflect. If you're still single, the same thing. In the family, we talk about love, how we love our parents. It's the same thing. It's that kind of uh, willing to let go of that ego. It's, it's the same time for uh, single, you may have siblings. And how is your relationship with your siblings? And that mutual love is always the same. Understanding of your sibling and to more acceptance, acceptance towards your sibling. All this is the same. The principle apply across the board. What it actually Paul challenged us is let go of the ego and then learn, continue to think for others. And then with the kind of love that Christ loved us, we strengthen that relationship. And here it talks about the mutual love as the motivation for our marriage. May God help all the husbands and wives and continue to practice this important lesson. And then the third lesson, in order to make home sweet home a reality, not only to make Christ the cornerstone of our family, not only to depend on mutual love, as the motivation of our marriage. And lesson three, Paul challenges us to utilize the biblical truth to realize the good parent-child relationship. Utilize the truth to realize the good parent-child relationship. So if you look at verses 20 and 21, basically it talks about children to obey the parents, and then parents do not provoke the children. Obey is the word that signifies obedience, surrender, comply, listen, and then to act upon. Of course, if you look at the other text, in Philippians in Ephesians, the, the words obey also come with the description obey in the Lord. So there's also a kind of a standard according to the word of God. And then he says, do not provoke. Fathers, it means parents, do not provoke your children. And the word provoke has the connotation, has the meaning of agitating, irritating, or even uh, reproof, that means uh, scolding and uh, irrational kind of behavior, demands. And because of all this behavior provoked, and then our children, they lost confidence in themselves. They lost hope. They lost the kind of joy. They lost the kind of faith and peace. So do not provoke your children. So basically what it actually means is always have to go back to the biblical word, the, the word of God, the biblical foundation, so that as we, either as children or parents, we need to learn how to be guarded by God's word. And here is quite important, especially when we talk about the children, we obey to our parents. That means we honor them, we honor them, and then we we, we do something and then to, to, to please them and then to, uh, to make our, our parents and proud of us through our action, through our deeds. So that's something that uh, is a challenge because we always say there is a generation gap. Uh, and sometimes uh, as children, we may feel like our parents do not understand us. 
and then we feel like they are old fashioned. And we feel like they they do not actually have the kind of uh, education they might, and so there are a lot of a uh, kind of uh, gapping in between. But the biblical way is always challenge us the word to obey, to honor our parents, to respect them, and then to make them happy, and then to please them, according to the word of God, of course. But always think for them; they are aging, and need they need to be. More understood by us, accepted by us, and then uh, to really care for them. In this time, maybe a parent is not around, not living with us because of COVID nineteen. Maybe it's in another country, another city. Obey them, do something for them, think about them, make a phone call, using FaceTime, video call, whatever, or even online. And then order something for them, and then deliver to their house, and to make them feel surprised, being being cared for, being understood. I mean, there are so many things to show that obey in action, and that's called basically utilize the truth to realize the good parent-child relationship, and also back to the parents. And the Bible says, "Do not provoke," and provoke a lot of time have to do with words, spoken words. A lot, of, a lot of time have to do with our attitude, the way we, we we react, the way we respond, the way we talk, the the wording that we use, the mood that we carry forth, and I think that's something that we have to be watchful. We may we may say the right thing, but using a wrong tone, at the wrong time, have the wrong attitude. By saying the right thing, so it is important. We have to ask God to help us. Do not provoke, but saying the right thing, right, right way, and right time. That's so important, and that's something that you and I continue learn. Instead of telling our children, "cannot," we should change it to, "What do you think?" How do you feel? Instead of asking, "Well, you have to do it now." Instead of asking them, "Well, do you think how long it will take?" Instead of says, "Don't cry. You cannot cry," rather than say, "Yes, share with me after your crying." I mean, there, there, there are so many things that the way that we can. The change the way we 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 speak to our children. Always to think for them, and 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 try to help them to really feel something, learn something. You see that I I came across a, a kind of a poem uh, years back. Let me read it out for you. If a child lives with criticism, he learns to condemn. If a child Leads with hostility, he learns to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, he learns to be shy. If a child lives with tolerance, he learns to be patient. If a child lives with encouragement, he learns confidence. If a child lives with praise, he learns to appreciate. If a child lives with fairness, he learns justice. If a child lives with security, he learns to have faith. If a child lives with approval, he learns to like himself. If a child lives with acceptance and friendship, he learns to find to find love. Parents, there are ways for you and I. To nurture, to interact with our children, it is so important. Back to the Word of God, utilize the truth, and then continue to strengthen, and then to realize, to practice, to result in a good parent-child relationship. Remember, go back to the Word of God. Home sweet home, 
It's always back to relationship. It's always back to relationship. And relationship always back to our personal walk with Christ. The more we learn of our Lord Jesus, to learn about His Word, and then to apply in our life as parents, how do we react? How do we treat our children? Especially our words, spoken words, can hurt. Spoken words can destroy. Spoken words can tear down. Spoken words even can kill. Of course, spoken words can build up. Spoken words can edify. Spoken words can encourage. So we have to ask God to help us with love inside our heart, with the word as our guide, as our standard, by faith, intentionally engage, and then to make home sweet home become reality for parents, for children, for every one of us, whether we are just single at, in the family, whether we are a married couple, or we have grandchildren, we have children, and our parents, may you and I, back to the Word of God, to make home sweet home a reality. Eventually, it's not because for us to enjoy. Eventually, home sweet home become a testimony of God's love and grace that our people within the family continue to grow and they are able to work out there, work to the community and then to continue to bless others. Blessed to be a blessing. The same thing for family. It's not for us only, but we are able to work out there, to community, to the world and then to make disciples of all nations. When we talk about the Great Commission, it is so far away. But where do we begin? Home sweet home. Let's begin with parents, husband and wife, children, our loved ones, within the family, and then to practice God's word. And from there, may our family to be a channel of God's blessing to many people. And Christ being lifted up and everyone within the family being blessed. And then eventually, we enter the community, the world, to make disciples of all nations. Let's pray. May the bountiful love of God the Father, the wonderful grace of Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. For this morning's prayer time, let us pray for the following three items. Firstly, let us give thanks to God for the family that He has blessed us with. We give thanks to Him for our parents who raise us under the watchful care of God. Let us also pray for our young parents who are on the learning journey of nurturing the future generation for God's glory. Pray for God's blessing upon each of our extended family members. Secondly, as a response to today's message, let us pray that our Lord Jesus will take his place as the cornerstone of our family, helping us to build strong marriages with the bonds of love. Pray also that enduring parent-child relationships will build upon the Word of God. Thirdly, pray that the Lord will grant wisdom to our leadership team who have been meeting to discuss the future direction of Newton Life Church after the COVID-19 pandemic is over. Pray that this new direction will bring glory to God and benefit to our family community. Let us pray. As we close this morning's worship, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. 
Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hi, brothers and sisters. I have a couple of announcements. Today is Mother's Day, and it is our practice as a church to set this day as Parents' Day. May the Lord bless our parents with healthy mind, body, and soul. And I just want to encourage parents, may our faith and living become a godly example to our children. We hope to gather some photos of you celebrating Parents' Day. So take some photos of your activities at home, like uh, worshipping together, praying together, eating, and doing workout together. Appreciate if you could send these photos to your small group leader or pastoral mentor. And again, just a gentle reminder for cash offerings. We request that you set aside the amount of offering put into an envelope. And when you return to church to worship, bring the offering along. Thank you. <music> 